Welcome back to another episode of A Nugget from Scripture. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. This is just uh, me sharing the gospel, you know, sharing something that I got out of the scripture, something that kind of stood out to me in my daily reading or maybe something uh, from church or, um, you know, some sort of another Bible study. Um, but it is just about sharing the gospel. So if you're new, welcome. Um, if uh, if you're new, this is uh, kind of was primarily originally um, an addiction ministry channel. Um, uh, we... Uh, um, put out videos. I try to put out videos once a week. I haven't been very uh, faithful about it the last few months, but um, uh, I put out videos from our One Step to Freedom uh, addiction recovery uh, curriculum, our addiction recovery program. It's a it's a curriculum that's put out by the Calvary Chapel Church Association. Um, it's been around for about 20 years. It's not something that I made up. It's the same thing that uh, is taught at several churches that I know of. It's a Bible-based uh, curriculum, and um, it's essentially just a Bible study. So if you're struggling with addiction, um, you can check out those videos. Um, and if you just need a Bible study, if you if you if you don't know how to study the Bible, if you're just looking for something that's that's easy because you know you're, you're not ready to get into some of the deeper things, um, then that's a great great place to start because it's aimed at people who are currently struggling with addiction and have not ever you know, been in any sort of a Bible study or anything, that's a great place to start. Uh, if you or somebody you know would like to request a Bible, you can contact me. The website is www.soberforchrist.com. There's a contact form on there. My email is info at newthirstaddictionministry.org. Also on the website, there's other Bible study tools on there, um, and all of them are free. Well, I won't say all of them are free. Uh, Bible Gateway has a free version, and then they have a paid version that's like $5 a month. Um, it's a good uh, program. Uh, one of my favorites is... Uh, as far as free goes is uh, blueletterbible.org. You can get the, the Bible in all of the different uh, transliterations. There's commentaries, dictionaries, lots of lots of Bible study tools on them. And then there's Logos, which is kind of geared towards um, somebody who teaches and leads a Bible study. Uh, you do you do pay for that program uh, and it's it's quite expensive but definitely worth it uh, but uh, that's that's that uh, i'm just endorsing them because i like telling people how to uh, be able to to share the bible i don't get anything out of that they're just tools that can be used and uh, like i said one i have it open right here on my screen it's where i'm going to read from is blueletterbible.com and uh, i'm sorry blueletterbible.org and uh, it's just got lots of lots of good useful tools on it as well as just a bible to read um so let's just go ahead and get in this uh, we'll just we'll try to keep it kind of short and sweet um less than the you know usual 25 or 30 minutes we got uh, but today we're in luke chapter 6 verses 46 and we're going to um, go through uh verse 49 so we'll just kind of read it all and then i'll break it down um and tell you what kind of stuck out to me and, and how i think we can apply this into our lives um in luke chapter 6 verse 46 starting here it says why do you call me lord lord and do not uh do what i say this is obviously speaking of Jesus saying this. Verse 47, it says, Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation and the torrent burst uh, against it and uh, immediately it collapsed and the ruin of the house was great and I apologize um, normally I read out of the New King James this is the uh, uh, NASB I mean they're both a uh, a word-for-word -word translation there's a couple of words that are different in there and I didn't notice it but uh, as opposed to torrent as it reads here um, in um, in uh, verse 48 and 49, you know, it says a torrent burst against the house and could not shake it. And then in 49, it says a torrent burst against the house and it completely collapsed. It says a stream in the New King James Version. And that's really the only major difference. Whereas they mean the same thing. But um, so what I wanted to talk about here is obviously we have Jesus speaking um, and he's 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 looking back and he's talking to his disciples. And he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, if you don't do the things that I say, if, if you're not following the things that I have told you to do? Um, the word Lord, we oftentimes look at as being um, the title of Jesus, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, where, you know, Lord is his first name, Jesus is middle name, Christ is his last name, or, you know, some sort of variation as to that. Lord is just essentially master. He says, why do you call me master or master, but you're not doing the things that I tell you to do? Um, 
when a servant is talking to his master, it's because he's desiring to do the things that the master has told him to do. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Why do you call me master, master? And then do not what I say to do. Um, He says, uh, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you who he was like. And what he's getting ready to, to tell this parable about the man who builds his house on the on the rock and the man who builds his house on the sand. And he says, uh, this is um, this is the kind of of a person that you're going to come into contact with or that you're going to experience or that you're going to be uh, if you uh, hear his words and then act upon them. You will be like the man who builds his house upon the rock. It says, uh, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when the flood occurred, the, the torrent came, the, the stream burst against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. If we as Christians uh, seek to build our foundation on Jesus, Jesus being the rock, if we seek to build uh, our foundation, our our spiritual foundation on rock, there's nothing that can push us away. Um, We will have a, a strong foundation. We have a strong foundation in him. When we seek to do the things that he tells us, um, uh, obedience is what is produced. It's not something that causes, uh, um, they can bring upon salvation. I've talked about that a hundred times, um, that it's by faith that we have salvation, but we're called to be obedient. Um, and that's, it's a command. It's not a suggestion. Like if you feel like being obedient to Jesus, it's, it's a command to be obedient to Jesus and being obedient to Jesus is, uh, how we show the world um, you know, our, our faith and our allegiance, if you will, our surrender, our absolute surrender to Jesus. He calls us to be absolute, absolutely surrendered to him. Um, and that's what the world sees. And, and we can be absolutely surrendered to him. And, um, uh, I kind of lost my train of thought there. We can be absolutely surrendered to him and have a strong foundation to take our faith into the world, knowing that nothing can topple us. It doesn't matter what anybody can do. There's nothing that a man can do uh, that can that can hurt our salvation. They might kill us physically, but they just kind of send us home. Um, there's nothing that's going to shake our, our house that is built if we build it on that firm foundation, Jesus being the foundation. Uh, contrary to that, the opposite of that, if we build our house um, on the world, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to fall apart. It's going to burn. That's, that's not a, a firm foundation. The word of God does not change. God does not change. God is immutable. It says that throughout the Bible says that in Titus, that God is not a man that he, uh, that he should lie. God does not lie. God does not change. Um, he's immutable, but the world changes. That doesn't give us a very, a very sturdy foundation. If it's wavering, if something is not good today, but is okay tomorrow, and then suddenly not good again, we're not building our foundation upon anything at all. We're building our foundation on something that is ultimately going to be destroyed and burned but God is not. God is eternal. Um, And so he tells us that uh, the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly, you've heard the word and you haven't built your foundation on the rock. You've heard the word. It's, it's kind of like the, uh, the parable of the sower, you know, you have the seed that goes on the shallow ground and it springs up because it's excited, but it has no depth of root and it withers and dies. It gets um, scattered into uh, the thorns and thorns and thistles grow up and choke it out. Um, It's the same kind of an idea here where, our foundation is not built on, or our house, I should say, is not built on a firm foundation. Um, so everyone who comes to me in verse 47, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He's like the man who builds his house on the rock, on the solid foundation, the foundation of Jesus. And then in verse 49, it says, but the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built his house on the ground without any foundation. And the torrent burst against it and it completely immediately it collapsed and the ruin of that house was great if you don't have a firm foundation the smallest little things can shake your faith as soon as somebody comes out and you know says something and it's really prevalent today uh somebody comes out and says well you know we've been saying for two thousand years that this is what the bible says um but uh, that's just not at all what it means you know it doesn't mean that abortion is murder and and they come up with some sort of twisted way of interpreting the scripture it doesn't mean that homosexuality is bad it doesn't mean that sex outside of marriage is bad because they come up with some sort of a weird way to test the scripture that's the torrent that comes in that just completely rips your faith out from under you and you're like man 
I guess I didn't really have anything to stand on at all. But if you build your uh, house on the solid foundation, on the rock, on the rock that is Jesus, and knowing that the truths that he has promised us uh, for centuries now, for thousands of years, and he's kept those promises and his truths have remained truth and the things that have been said are going to happen, continue to happen, have happened and continue to happen. And we have no reason to doubt his promises. We have our house on the solid rock, on the found, or uh, on the on the solid foundation, and we won't waver um, when those storms come in. Um, this is important for us as Christians and especially for those that are new believers. Um, don't listen to what the world has to say. The, the world is full of of deceit um, even sometimes well-meaning people have deceit in their hearts uh, maybe even unknowingly but they can deceive people don't ever take anything that I say in a video on here um, as though it is gospel as though it's like um, some sort of anything special get in your Bible go and search it out for yourself um, yes I'm trying to teach and lead and guide but don't take don't don't take it just because I said it don't take it just because your pastor said it don't take it just because the guy on TV the event Evangelist on TV said it, get in your Bible and search it out. That's your foundation. The, the Bible is God speaking to us. And I mean, this applies to, to everybody, new believers, um, uh, people that have been Christians for years, maybe, and just haven't necessarily gotten involved with it. And if you're not right now, I mean, first of all, I would encourage you um, to make that decision because the days are short. I very, very firmly believe that the days are short just by watching the events that are happening in our world. And it, it's everything is unfolding uh, right before our eyes to lead up into the last days, to ultimately lead up into, um, you know, the book of Revelation, to the rapture of the church and the judgment of the world. So I, I encourage you because there is hope. Um, you know, we have hope in, in, in Jesus. And that hope is not a, a hope like we have in mankind, because that's going to disappoint the hope that we have in Jesus. You hear that used a lot. And it's because the word is used in the Bible. And in the Bible, the word means when, when referring to Jesus and the promises, it is a confident expectation. It's we're expecting this to happen because of the promises that he has made. And he uh, being unchangeable is promising to do these things in the future. And we have that hope. We have that, that confident expectation. And it's not a, it's not a human hope that's going to disappoint, but I encourage you, uh, we have hope. You can have peace. There is no peace aside from God. We might think that we have peace, but there is not. The world does not have peace as, as mankind. We cannot have peace and we definitely can't have peace with God without the Son. No man comes to the Father except through Him. We can have peace on this earth. We can have uh, joy on this earth, not happiness. Everything that we have on this earth that's uh, physical just brings happiness. Um, you know, this electronic devices, all of our possessions and things that we have, they can bring us happiness, but that luster wears off. Your new your new car can bring you happiness and joy for a temporary per um, a, a period of time. But that word happiness is temporary and joy, especially joy in the Lord, that is permanent. We can always have joy in the Lord no matter what our circumstances are we can have this joy that can be the worst day of our lives but we're, we're good because we know that God's got us and we know that no matter what happens we have eternal life in heaven the days are short so if you're if you're listening to this and you haven't made a commitment to to Jesus I I implore you to do so now and do, uh, do so now pray to God it doesn't have to be anything um, you know extravagant there's not a sinner's prayer um, call on God Call on Jesus, ask him to forgive you for your sins and to, uh, to, to forgive you for your sins and to give you that uh, assurance of salvation and to fill your life with the Holy Spirit and to turn yourself around. And then this is the our part. We have to repent. We have to admit that we are wrong. We're sinners and uh, not just turn away from completely uh, 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 from our sins. We must repent and turn away from our sins, but not just turn away from, from you know, the things that we do that are sinful, but turn our whole entire lives over to God and to the care of him. And I know as humans, that's kind of hard for us to do because we like to think that we're in control of things but we're really not because we're not in control of our next breath. Um, once you do these things, they'll get into a good Bible teaching church and then build your foundation on the words that are in this book. Study it out. Use those Bible study tools that I told you from the beginning, blueletterbible.com, Bible Gateway. Again, that one's free as well. It's, unless you want to pay the $5 a month, Logos is, um, is great. Lots and lots of Bible study tools, lots of resources cheaper than buying the books. Uh, you know, I've got commentaries up here that if I would have had to have bought all this, be several hundred dollars worth of commentaries. They're still expensive, but they're digital um, and you can just add on to your collection. But there's lots of resources out there, but get out there and get your, um, build your foundation 
foundation or build your house on that foundation, build your foundation on the rock. And there's no important, no more important decision than we can do than to make our, uh, or no more important decision that we have in our life than to, to make the decision to turn our life over to Jesus. And there is no better time to do it than right now. There is no more urgent time because we're not guaranteed anything. We might not be sick. We might not have any problems. Um, but that doesn't mean that it could be your last breath right now. I could not have my last breath before I finish making this video or as soon as I click end. We just don't know those things because we're not in control of them. So to the Christian, to the believer, to the one who has <clears throat> been around, make sure that you have your foundation in God's word, in on, on Jesus, that Jesus is your firm foundation. Um, that is where we are to build our house on the rock and then we will not waver. And that when the times come, when the persecutions come, when the trials and tribulations come, we're not going to waver we're going to stay steadfast that is going to produce and increase our christian character and our faith and the world is going to see that if you are a new believer make sure that you're putting your faith if you're a new believer or somebody who doesn't believe yet and you're making that decision make sure to put your faith in jesus and study the word read the word and study and then one one more important thing before i close this out is make sure to read out and study what it says not to add into it don't insert yourself into it um, it all applies to you but don't make yourself the hero of the book don't make yourself the david or the daniel or any of these other things the hero is jesus and it's all about jesus from the very first page to the very last page in your bible um, it all points to jesus so make sure we pull out of it what it says and not add to it into it and interpret what we want it to say or what we think it says that it just says what it says and it means what it says but jesus needs to be our foundation we have to make sure that Jesus is our foundation. So um, that's it. I'm going to wrap this up for this video. Hey, guys, I appreciate if you made it this far. I appreciate you watching. Um, make sure to find a church, get into a Bible teaching church, stay grounded, stay in God's word, read it daily. Make sure that you have that daily de uh, time of of devotion to God, to reading and to prayer. Uh, our prayer is how we can speak to God. We can bring our, our praise and petitions and give God our thanksgiving. Uh, and um, God's word is how he speaks to us. Um, you know, and it's important that we pray according to God's will. He's not a genie in the bottle for us to, you know, just get whatever it is that we want. Um, uh, it's his will. And uh, when we pray to God, it's not to get what we want done, but it's to get his will done here on earth. Stay grounded, stay in God's word. God bless. I love you guys check out the website check out some of the other videos if you're somebody you know like i said that's struggling with addiction uh you can contact me i will help you find a program of a bible-based program uh, in your area help you find a good bible teaching church in your area there is a calvary chapel church finder um, on the website i've been going to calvary for 20 years it is a um it's, it's what I would go to. I like would have a hard time moving somewhere that doesn't have a Calvary because we teach through the Bible a chapter by chapter, book by book from the beginning to the end. And then we start over and it's so we get the full counsel of God and not just whatever the pastor wants to talk about. But as long as you're in a good Bible teaching church, that's what the Bible says and not what the pastor wants you to hear, you're going to be good. But I can help you with those things. All you have to do is reach out. Excuse me. And if you or somebody you know would like to request a Bible, contact me and I will send you one free of charge. I believe that everyone needs to have a paper Bible because at the end of the day, AI cannot rewrite this paper Bible because it's already been printed. Um, AI is currently working on rewriting a Bible. Um, and I think it's just a matter of time before all of these digital things that we have on the Internet get altered in a way. And they might be subtle ways. Um, subtle ways that only somebody that's really truly versed in the Bible is going to pick up um, but a, a, a new believer is going to be or somebody who does not believe is going to be completely led astray um, not to mention your Bible doesn't need to be charged it doesn't require electricity to use um, and the battery never dies um, so make sure you have a paper Bible that's it guys stay grounded stay in God's word God bless and we will see you next time bye-bye